Hey, welcome guys to the Peaks Ice Arena tutorial on scorekeeping. So we are using the Dactronics 5000 series control console. In my opinion, it's one of the easiest consoles to use for ice hockey scorekeeping. Okay, so next to the console, we have a cheat sheet. Um, if you need quick reference, refresher, or on any of the things that we're gonna go over here, uh, you can look at that. The code for ice hockey on this console is 4103. Should already be set, but I just wanted to mention it here. And I'm going to walk you through each step in the order that you would do it for a real game. So first we're gonna talk about how to set the home and away team names, and then I'll talk about setting up the warm-up game lengths, and then I'll point out some buttons and their functions, and finally I'll show you how to enter a player penalty. This is just going over the basics, so let's get going. Okay, when you get to the keypad, you will see either the time of day that's set up there or you may have come from a different game, but you need to be able to set the home and away team names. So in order to do that, you'll hit menu and then you'll scroll down three times until it says select home. This is the enter button, which allows you to select the home name. So ice wolves, instead of ice wolves, we're gonna type in peaks. And I am using these highlighted letters that are here. Now the name of ice wolves is longer than the new name I'm putting in peaks. And so I need to use the space button in order to blank out the remaining letters. Now my home team just says Peaks. I'm going to say that is yes and correct, hit the enter key. And now it asks me if I want to put in a guest name, hit the enter key one more time. And we're going to just put in Arena. And again, we're going to blank out some of the remaining letters that are there and hit enter. Okay, so now we're back to the main display. But as you can see up on the screen there, As you can see on the screen up there, we are set to Peaks Arena. Okay, back on the console, this is what you're going to see. The time matches the time that is up on our display. We are going to set now the warm-up and game lengths. In order to do that, there's a button over here saying Set Main Clock. I'll hit Enter on Set Main Clock, and we're going to do a three-minute warm-up. So I'll enter in three minutes. That is correct, I'll hit Enter. And now my time is ready to go for three minutes. Start and stop buttons over here on the right. I'll just click start and the time starts counting down. This is my warm up time. As soon as this time ends, you'll hear a buzzer. The buzzer is automatic. You don't need to do anything. And then you can reset the new time. Okay? So I'm going to hit stop on this as if we, or let's see, let's set main clock and let's do it for three seconds. And I will allow you to hear what the siren sounds like. Let's run a three second warm up. The three second warm up is over. Now we're, uh, the teams are gathering their pucks, they're going to the benches and we need to set the main clock. So for the time of the game, this depends on whether or not it's a youth game, a different tournament will have a different style of, of period length and sometimes age divisions will determine how long those periods will be. Let's say we're going to set a 10 minute period, but I'm going to actually set a 10 second period just for intensive purposes and then hit enter on this and then I'm ready to go. Again, start and stop would start my clock. Start, and you'll see it count down. Every time a whistle is blown and you need to stop play, you would click stop, start when the puck is dropped, and stop when the whistle is blown. That, are, though, that is how you would set the main clock for any of your games. Let's talk about some of the other buttons that are on this console that are interesting of note. Here you have score, so there's a plus one and a minus one. So if I hit plus one, that's going to be the home team, and as you've noticed, it says home up here. The home team will have a score of one. On the other side, the, if the away team scores, then I would just hit one and the score changes. If that was a mistake and the referee tells me to remove that, I can just hit negative one and it would go back to zero. Uh, at the end of gameplay, the uh, first period, the buzzer will sound and you will move into the second period. Let's do that currently. So we would set a clock, set main clock, and we are going to have an intermission of one minute while the teams gather and discuss their strategies. I'll save that. And what I want to do is change the period number. This button here changes the period, length, period of the game. So if I click this, it says second period. If I click it one more time, it would say third period, four, fifth period, six, seven, eight, nine, and it just rolls over back to zero one if I make a mistake on the period number. 
The last thing we're going to discuss here is how to enter in a player penalty. Uh, if a player has a penalty, depending on whether they're the home team or the guest team, you would want to make sure that you are putting it in the correct location. And player penalties are all listed down here. If you have a player penalty, you click player penalty and it already comes up ready for information from you. You would look over and see that it is player number one. So you type in zero one and then you would save that by hitting enter to move you over. Now, because we're using code 4103, it's already set for a two minute uh, minor penalty. If you needed to change this at any time, you could just type in 130 for a, a minute 30 penalty or 200 for back to a two minute period uh, penalty. And when you are set, you would hit enter and that penalty automatically goes up on the board and let's see what that looks like here. So player one, penalty two minutes for the home team, which is peaks. Okay, if I hit the start button, the clock will start counting down in addition to the player's penalty counting down. You don't need to do anything special. If I push stop, then the penalty and the clock stop at the same time. If I wanted to delete individual penalties, I can do so just by using the delete penalty here. That shows me delete player one, penalty has a minute 55. So in this situation, let's say the other team scored on a power play and I needed to clear that penalty, then I would just say yes to deleting this penalty and the penalty is deleted. There is one additional feature that you need to know if a penalty goes over um, a break in time. So if a penalty goes in over a, a period length, so you're gonna stop the clock and then there's a minute and then you want to come back and do another 13 minute period, then you, you can do what is called enabling and disabling penalties. So if I were to, let's add a penalty for player, we're going to add player one again, and he has a two minute penalty. Then we are going to run the clock and the time is counting down, stop, and this is the end of a period. What I would do is I would say disable penalty clocks, and I can click that button, and then when I run the clock, the penalty does not run at the same time and I could set, I can go and I can set my main clock for a minute. This is the break in between a period and I can push start and it will count down, but it doesn't change. The player's penalty clock is not moving during this time. If I click enable penalties, then my penalty clock will start running with that clock. If I click disable, then it stops. So before the next period starts and when you're ready to go, you would hit stop. Let's set our new game time as 13 minutes and click enter for that. And then we are going to enable penalties again. So now the penalty clocks will run in addition to the game clock running at the same time. That's really it. It's, they're super simple. If you have any questions, there's a cheat sheet right next to you. Write down the times when penalties start. So if you ever need to do the math, you can do that and just add the number of penalty minutes if they have. Do that all on the score sheet. You should be fine. Super simple.